Chris Christie announces he's running for president again. All righty, uh, let's go ahead and go to it. A lonely, self-consumed, self-serving mirror hog <laughs> is not a leader. Well, let me be clear in case I have not been already. <laughs> the person I am talking about who is obsessed with the mirror, who never admits a mistake, who never admits a fault, and who always finds someone else and something else to blame for whatever goes wrong, but finds every reason to take credit for anything that goes right, is Donald Trump. And if we don't have that conversation with you, we don't deserve to ask for your vote. We don't deserve the mantle of leadership. We don't deserve to have you think of us as people worthy of leadership. Man, it sounds like he was being authentic. You know what's interesting? I literally just had this conversation right here on Indisputable with Christian Daytok, who is the White House correspondent for the Washington Examiner. And he said that he believed if Chris Christie or when Chris Christie says, yes, I'm running for president, that Chris Christie will be the first and only person to go directly after Trump. So I have to give credit to my dear brother, all right? You are correct, Daytok, he has done so. And I also said during that show, that person is probably going to be in a very interesting uh, political situation. It may work out for him. Let's put up the picture full mass. Former New Jersey governor, Chris Christie, launched his second presidential campaign Tuesday, entering the growing Republican primary race as Donald Trump's main antagonist, not main competition, at least not yet. Christie took aim at Trump throughout his remarks, calling him a bitter, angry man who wants power back for himself. He also called Trump a coward and a puppet of Russian President Vladimir Putin. Uh, now, how did Trump react? Interesting. So Trump shared on social media a Make America Great Again response to Christie's candidacy for uh, spokeswoman, all right, Caroline Levitt. Ron DeSantis' campaign is spiraling and President Trump's dominance over the Republican primary field has opened a mad rush to seize the mantle for runner up. DeSantis is not ready for this moment and Chris Christie will waste no time eating DeSantis for lunch. Uh, so before I go to the next part of this saga that's connected but not connected, I want to get Jenk's opinion. Uh, because these cats are talking big and bad now. Even Pence is saying a little something. something. Uh, but all of them co-signed on this foolishness. And all of them say that Trump was right when Trump was saying he was right. And all of them knew he was wrong. So now they're saying, oh, he's a horrible person. They're agreeing with progressives, by the way, sounding like a progressive right now. But telling progressive they were wrong about Trump during his entire presidency. Well, what's the dangerous part? The President Trump is the dangerous part. When he was dangerous, you were scared of him and progressives had to be your voice. But as soon as he has no actual power, you start sounding like us. Forgive me if I don't give the brother a hero cookie. Yeah, so first, I, I got no interest in Chris Christie overall, right? So uh, one, you're absolutely right. And we used to uh, do these videos uh, uh, on the Young Turks back then where John would actually like stand behind me as if he was Chris Christie, John <laughs> Idrola would from Damage Report. And he'd be like, <laughs> and because that's who Chris Christie was. He was the statue behind Donald Trump. He oh. was one of the first to back Donald Trump. Uh, he helped Trump uh, maybe more than any other uh, candidate. Uh, he eliminated Marco Rubio's competition, etc. So he's absolutely positively guilty on that. He's also an establishment Republican, uh, and so he will do exactly what the corporate donors want, etc. Now, having said all of that, Rashad, uh, I might surprise you by saying this is the one guy that is not useless in the Republican primary. Uh, so Mike Pence, Nikki Haley, et cetera, they have no chance whatsoever. And even though Chris Christie's polling it around the same place they are, which is near 0%, I actually think he has just as good a chance as Ron DeSantis of winning. And there's one reason why, because 
he's the one guy in the race who's fearless. Yeah. And if you're gonna beat Trump, you need that. You, it's an absolute necessity. So at least he's got a fighter's chance. Yeah, the tribalism of the Republican Party requires that you come after the guy who's currently the tribe leader. And the unwillingness to do so indicates your unreadiness to lead. All right, so let's go to an interesting saga connected to this story. Stephen A. Smith, well, looks like he's supporting Christie. But my staff tells me you're friends with Chris Christie. You know, you don't want him for president, do you? I'd rather have him for president than Donald Trump. I'll be the first to admit that. I understand that he's got a, a gladiatorial attitude and he's ready for, to combat, combat. We know what he did to Marco Rubio in 2016 during the primaries and all of that stuff. We get all of that. I think that he's a guy that is not walking around and preaching about, you know, uh, uh, rigged elections and all of this other stuff. He's about moving the country forward. I don't know whether he'll win or not. I know it's a long shot. I understand that Donald Trump's got him beat by a mile at this particular moment in time, but in the same breath. I don't think he's going to be pushed around by the former president. And I think that Chris Christie knows what he's talking about. He's highly intelligent. Hey, he's Stephen highly a. accomplished. Guy, now, whether so or not that's going to win him, I don't know. When you look at him, and I, I think that, you know, he's competent and more importantly, he's going to be talking about issues as opposed to having us distracted with a whole bunch of nonsense that we don't need to be distracted with as a country. That's all I'm saying. Now, whether he wins, and I know it's a long shot. I know it's a very long shot, but I tell you this much, I'd vote for him before I'd vote for any of the Democrats. Democratic candidates that I've seen, but that's not the same when it comes to DeSantis or Trump. But when it comes to him, I know that's what position I take. I'm a registered independent. Whoa. All right, Stephen A. Smith taking some shots because of his comments. Um, I understood his commentary, especially about the Democratic Party. Just keep it at 100. Definitely understood. And if Chris Christie strikes some of that, uh, there could be some trouble. So, Jank, what are your thoughts about Christie's statement in reference to, I mean, uh, Steve, uh, Stephen A. Smith's statement in reference to Christie and basically in reference to the Democratic field? Yeah. Well, Democratic field is miserable, so he's right about that. But overall, Stephen A. Smith is, appears to be um, exactly what you'd expect, which is a moderate Republican. So, on <laughs> social issues, uh, he doesn't want to be discriminated against. That makes sense, right? But when it comes to economic issues, he likes those tax cuts for the rich, because I got news for you, he rich. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, so Chris Christie's. That's why the establishment loves him, because they know he's going to get deliver for the rich. He's going to deliver for the donors, uh, and he's willing to take on Trump. And and so if they and he's not as odious as DeSantis is on the social issues. So for a moderate Republican like Stephen A. Smith, that's kind of a perfect candidate, to be honest. Yeah. All right. We shall see.